let's discuss variables, lists, and maps, which are used to store data in your app. A variable is used to store simple data that you'll be using within your application. Let's start by opening up your browser and going to dartpad.dev. We'll clear out anything in there. You can declare and initialize a variable this way. This says declare a variable named name and set it to Tommy. So if we were now to print name, we should see Tommy over here in the console. And we do. Some things to note about variables. Variables can only be letters or numbers with the exception of the underscore and dollar sign. So this works. And this works. But this won't work. Also, variables cannot start with a number. So this will work, but this won't work. You'll see it's grayed out there. And although this won't work in some programming languages like PHP, it does work in Dart and Flutter. Also keep in mind that variables in Dart and Flutter are case sensitive. So this, is different than this. As you can see, if we set this back to Tommy and we try to run this, we have an error. Another thing we can do are type annotations, which lock down the variables to a certain type of value. We can have strings, which are just characters enclosed by a single quote or a double quote like this or this, but if you try to put a number in here, since we're saying it's a string, we will get an error. But you can put the number if you enclose it in quotes. If we want to specifically use numbers, we can use INT for integer. which although I don't look 12, I certainly act like it. We can also do doubles. And we have Booleans, which are just true or false. So we're gonna set this to B-O-O-L and our variable is going to be called is really cool. And we're going to set that to true. Now you may have noticed that string is fully spelled out with the capital where integer is lowercase and abbreviated. The reason simply is they wanted to keep the syntax similar to other programming languages like Java to facilitate people migrating over. So you can print these variables alone like this. Or you can use pluses to put the variables in a sentence like this. But once we run it, you'll notice we got an error. That's because the print function only prints strings or values and age is an integer. So we can convert age to a string like this. Or we can do it a much simpler way like this. You'll notice we do have to have dollar signs on these variables. So where a variable holds a single value, we're now going to look at lists which can hold a collection or multiple values. Let's say we're going to collect this data here for multiple users and we want to organize this a little better. 
we can start a list by doing this. And then we could add the items to the list. And if we print that, we now have everything together. And then what we can do is we can update our sentence to look like this. You'll notice that the first entry in the list was set to zero instead of one. This is fairly common in most programming languages. So this one will be zero, this one will be one, this one will be two, this one will be three, and so on. And we can also do it the shorter method. But you'll notice we did have to put curly brackets around our variables because we have these other characters. There's actually a shorter version you can do to set up this list. You'll notice though that we have an error on the screen now. It says the argument type object can't be assigned to the parameter type string. So it's seeing it as an object instead of a list. That could be easily corrected by specifying you're doing a list like this. The error went away and we should get our results. You can even use type annotations like string or integers if you want to specify what type of values the list will have. So a list of strings might look like this. And in our case, we could use dynamic since we have a variety of types in our list. But if you leave off the type annotation, it will default to dynamic. And there's a handful of additional things you can do to lists. For example, you can get the first element of the list like this. or the last. You can get the length of the list. And you can print the list in reverse. You can also remove a list item by its value. We're gonna go ahead and remove the bank balance because I don't really wanna see that. That looks much better. Or you can remove it by its position as well. Remember, zero, one, two. So it'll be set to two, still gone. Or we can actually just clear everything out all together like this. And there's other things that we will visit along the way. So what if we had a lot of things in our list though, or our list was a little more random and we couldn't easily keep up with where the value we want is inside the list. That's where maps will come into play. So we will start a new map up here at the top. And we will add our items to it.
and we will print that out. And we see everything is there. And just like with list, we can do it the more compact way as well. And now when we do our sentence, we don't have to remember what position the values are. We just have to remember their labels. And you'll see once again, we have the error. The argument type object can't be assigned to the parameter type string. We can fix that the same way we did list with putting map here. It'll go away and we can run it. There we go. And of course we can do it the shorter way as well. And there we are. And you can do similar things with map that you can do with list, like we can do length. And we can remove. And of course we can still clear. Where things are really going to get powerful is when you combine these things together. For example, we can make a list of users and each user is a map. We can now loop through the users to get just their name like so. There we have it. Pretty cool, right? We will get more in depth with lists and maps as we go along. But in the next video, we'll take care of this knowledge and finally get our list view added to our app. I'll see you there.